Okay, so we've got our Sublime Text Editor, we've got our Git Bash Terminal, we've got Python. Now we need to fire up a virtual environment and install Django. So if you already had your Git Bash Terminal running before you installed Python, come up here and click the little X to close it and restart it. Because once you install Python, you need to restart the Git Bash Terminal so that it knows that Python has been installed uh, and you're good to go. So come over here and type PWD, oops, PWD, PWD, there we go. You notice we're in the C users flat planet directory. So the first thing we want to do is create a new directory to hold all of our new Django files for our new project that we're going to create. So to do that, we just type in MKDIR, which stands for make directory. And this is the same command on a Mac or Linux. So you're fine there. Now we want to put this in the C drive. You can put it anywhere you want, but C is easy. And what do we want to call this? Let's just call it Django stock, right? Okay, so now we need to change into that directory, cd, change directory. So we just type c, uh, Django stock, and you can see it pops up right here. So we know we're in there, right? Or you could type in pwd, and you can see we're in c, Django stock. So now we need to install and start, start up something called a virtual environment. And a virtual environment is like a little container that holds all of your stuff, right? And it kind of separates it from your computer. So we can install all kinds of things inside of that virtual environment. And if we screw something up, it doesn't affect the rest of our computer. And we can install different versions of things. So if we want a different version of Django, we can install just that version in that virtual environment. And then we can install a different version in a different virtual environment if we want. So if you have multiple projects, multiple requirements. It's just a good idea. It's just a standard best practice. And with the Git Bash terminal, it's pretty easy to do that. And that's what we're going to finish doing throughout this course or throughout this video. But first, let's type in pip freeze. And what this command does is it shows us what Python stuff modules are already installed on our computer. Now, if this is a fresh Python installation for you, there's not going to be much anything listed when we put this command in. And it takes a second for some reason. Now I've been programming Python and Django for years and years. So I've got all kinds of stuff listed already. And you notice I've already got virtual environment, which is a module. You probably don't. So you're going to need to install it. So let's do that real quick. Uh, let's clear the screen. And to do that, we just go pip install. Pip is the installation program that comes with Python. So when you installed Python, you also install pip behind the scenes. So we want to pip install virtual env. Right. So it's telling me I've already got it installed, but you it'll you go through a little quick installation and you're good to go. So let's clear the screen again. Now we need to set up virtual environment now and then we need to initialize it. So to set it up, we just type in Python dash M and then V E N V. And then we need to name our virtual environment. What, what directory do we want to put this stuff in? And I'm just going to name it V E N V because it's a virtual environment but name it anything you want. So when we do this, it takes a second for it to do its thing. But what it's doing now is it's installing a bunch of virtual environment files, setup files and things that allow us to now use virtual environment. So if we can type LS to list the stuff that's in our directory in our Django stock directory. And we see there's a new directory venv. So if we change into that directory, and then type LS to list the stuff in it, you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here. Now these are the, the setup files that we're going to use to start using virtual environment. And the scripts folder is the one we really care about. It has the activation file uh, that activates our virtual environment. So you don't really need to know that. But if you're interested, that's where that is. So now I'm going to change back into the directory we were just in. So now we're in C Django stock again. So let's clear the screen. Now we need to turn on our virtual environment. So to do that, we type in source. And then the name of the directory, which is venv. And then the scripts directory, and then activate. A-C-T-I-V-A-T-E, -E, activate. So this is going to activate our virtual environment. It's going to turn it on. And so hit enter. And when we do, you see it says venv right there in parentheses. So from now on, if I kind of hit enter every time I do, we see this venv. That means the virtual environment is turned on, right? So now what's cool 
is if we clear the screen, if I type in pip freeze now, remember when I did it a minute ago, there was a whole long list of Python programs that I have installed on my computer. But now we're inside of our virtual environment. So there shouldn't be anything else installed in there. And there isn't. So very cool. We're now in our virtual environment. The next step is to install Django and set up our new project. One quick tip very quickly. If you want to turn off your virtual environment, you just CD into that directory and then that scripts directory, right? And if we LS, there's our activate file. There's also a deactivate. We could just type in now deactivate. And when we do, you see this VENV thing? It's disappeared. It's no longer there. If we hit enter a bunch of times, you see it's not there. So I'm going to go back. Oops back into our Django stock directory here. And now I'm just going to turn on the virtual environment again. So source uh, VENV scripts activate. And when we do, boom, it turns it back on. So that's how you turn it on. That's how you turn it off. You're mostly just going to leave it running anytime you're working on your Django project and you're good, going to be good to go. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll install Django and create our new project and move on from there.